This is a segment from my show called Jimmy's Three Things over on the Talking Baseball YouTube channel. I wanted to share it with you guys because it's wild. It's one of the more interesting and fun deep dives I've done. And to let you know that I do these kind of things over there every Tuesday on the Talking Baseball channel. Jake and Trev do series recaps. We got a lot of in-depth baseball coverage on Talking Baseball YouTube channel, so check it out. This one, though, I think a lot of people would enjoy, so I'm sharing it with you here, and then you can catch the rest of the episode over there if you are so inclined. Thanks. Topic number one, McNeil and Reese Hoskins, the fight. I did a breakdown on it. I was very interested in it. Uh, In my breakdown, this part kind of really made me think, like, wait, what? Because they watch the replay, and then McNeil turns After watching the replay, and he says, you think that's fucking okay? And you can see Reese is like, yeah. So there's just a disconnect between what's a good slide, what's a bad slide, what's allowed, what's not allowed, what's dirty, what's what's not dirty, what's aggressive and competitive, and what's dirty. And and McNeil seems to think that anything aggressive and competitive is dirty because a lot of MLB players that I I, I reached out to, Trevor Plouffe, who does talking baseball, uh, and then he reached out to other guys like, that's not dirty. It's aggressive. It was late, but he's trying to break up the double play within the rules of the game and didn't get anyone injured. Uh, Dallas Braden tweeted out like, dude, learn to move your feet around the bag. You just planted there. So the first thing in the rabbit hole, I'm just going to give you the rabbit hole that I went down in chronological order. Number one, this picture was flying around the Internet. From Braves fans saying like, oh, McNeil's done a dirty slide too. Look at this slide. He's way offline out of the base path. So I said, all right, let's go find that play. I want to I see if that, you know, if this is just a screenshot or is that really a dirty play? So I pulled up play and here it is. Vogelback hits it to second. McNeil slides and they run into each other. It's not dirty. He's, he's really just sliding way early. Like if you want to say the cutoff of the grass, I don't know if my cursor's on the screen. The cutoff of the grass right there, that's kind of like early or late. Just just an easy way to gauge. If you slide after that, it's a little late, aggressive. If you slide before that, you're giving yourself up because he's not really trying to get to the bag there. I think he didn't realize the the shortstop was going to come into him. So I didn't think that was dirty. It, it, it ended up helping, but I didn't think that was dirty on McNeil's part to his credit. Now, where things got weird is I went and I was like, well, let's see if McNeil has any dirty slides. So I went and I searched every time McNeil's been on first base and um, there's uh, less than two outs. So the team is going to try and turn a double play and there's a ground ball to the infield. And I wanted to see what that looks like. And what I found kind of blew me away. And I'll just show you all the videos that I found now. And what you're looking for is this plays is McNeil's the runner on first and how he tries to break up Double place. There is a 6-4-3 Taylor. Bar to short. Velasquez makes another good play. Starts an inning. Hopper out to Adamas to allow one. First. Right at Pena. Altuve with the easy turn for the 6-4. Play ball right at Birdie. The turn by Diaz. Rojas. The flip to Castro. The off balance. Double play ball right at Iglesias. The turn by Alberto for the 6 Side Kim will go to second for one on to first. We'll play ball right to Crawford, the turn. So as you can see, he he doesn't try to break up the double play. It's almost like it's not an option in his head. Uh, I watched 160 instances in his career, and um, I had to cut a lot down because this this got too long. Uh, a lot of them by look like this. For the play ball right at Bogarts, and the turn by Gonzalez. To turn. There's one on that's why he did it. You saw him move into the spot and it started to McMahon. I mean, he's not even he's being considerate. He's being gentlemanly. He's saying, hey, I don't want to get in the way of what you guys are doing. You want to turn the double play? Go ahead and turn it. Who am I to try to stop it? The second and Brennan. Donaldson on the back end out at second. And all- there's the grounder. Camargo to second for one. On four. Harrison Garcia. Down to third. Walls goes to second for one. Lau at it. Panic to Crawford. Crawford. Be two. Albies to right. Could be two. What was the hat? You know? What was that one? If I go backwards here. Uh, when I was fo- when I was finding these, there were some like that where he just runs straight through, doesn't slide at all. He never really tries to slide and get to the bag. Uh, he's not really trying to get in the way. So that 
was really weird to me and kind of eye-opening. Like, oh, he's very respectful, so he thinks that you shouldn't try to break up double plays. Uh, and then I was like, okay, let's go watch what Reese Hoskins does, who's slower than McNeil. And McNeil has this, like, uh, reputation as, like, a blue-collar grinder, like, tough player. So that kind of really surprised me to see all of that. I went to Reese Hoskins, who's slower, I think 20%. I think Hoskins is, like, I think McNeil's 50% in uh, sprint speed, and Hoskins is, like, 25. Uh, so here's every time Reese Hoskins has been on first base, and there's a grounder to the infield, less than two outs, so the team's going to try and turn a double play. And here's how he attacks it. And uh, that's trying to turn two. On left side, Cronenworth will go to second base for one on to first. It'll be off the mark. Shortstop, DeYoung has it, goes to second for one. Back over to first, not in second. Rendon to second for one. And they won't turn the double. So as you can see, what Hoskins does is he gets his ass down the line quick. When he gets to that cutoff point that I was talking about, he gets big like a bear, like you're trying to scare a bear, ah, you know? Uh, throws his hands up, gets kind of upright with his chest, and then drops down into the base. And as you can see on these highlights, he induces a lot of bad throws and breaks up the double play. He's never injured someone at second. That's a good example of what he does. He's never injured uh, the player. You know, there might be contact, but within the rules, and he's it's winning baseball. I mean, he's doing everything he can. He's like, hey, I don't have speed, so I'm not going to be safe here. Uh, let me try and do everything I can to play winning baseball, and that's what he's doing. And this was, again, I had to cut this down. I had just There was just a lot of examples of this where he's inducing bad throws, putting pressure on the fielder, and it's working. Uh, McNeil was the complete opposite. He was granting people double plays. I was very confused. I was like, this is odd. So... I, oh, this I have so many more of these from uh, McNeil. See, uh, I color coded it. Pink was to the shortstop, yellow was to the third baseman, and blue was to the second baseman. And yeah, so Reese breaks up a lot of double plays by using his big body <clears throat> and getting to the bag down late. Again, he's never hurt anyone. Um, it's just that's it's still part of the game. The rules didn't make this not part of the game, but I, I'm beginning to think the Mets might think the rules made this not part of the game because I kept digging, right? Well, first, I wanted to compare Reese and McNeil. Again, McNeil is faster. Here's a ball hit to the shortstop and flipped to second base. A very similar play. Reese is already in frame, and he's sliding He's not going down until he hits that cutoff point of the grass where McNeil is giving himself up way early, has no interest in being part of the play, and just says, there you go, go ahead, turn it. Uh, so that was wild. And then I said, okay, let me find one in a close game because that's unfair if one game doesn't matter and the other game is really close. So up top, you have Phillies. Uh, they are tied at zero in the bottom of the fourth inning. Base is loaded. Down below, the Mets are up two in the sixth inning. And I also wanted to find balls that were hit similarly. So if you see on my uh, premier timeline, this blue marker, that's when the ball hits the bat. So the ball hits the bat. I synced that up. Uh, and then the ball is hit to the shortstop. And as they flip it to the second baseman, you can see Reese Hoskins is in frame. And he's about to get big on him like a bear and then drop down to make it hard. And McNeil just comes into frame now and is has no interest in in playing competitive baseball on this play. Just gives himself up and makes it easy. And I was like, that's crazy. And then I wanted and then I wanted to make sure people didn't think I was cherry picking a bajillion. So I put two Reese Hoskins on the right and eight McNeil on the left. And again, this point uh, where the blue marker is on my timeline is when the bat hits the ball. And if you watch through to when Reese gets to the bag, he's by the cut on the two on the right already, and McNeil is nowhere in frame on the bottom four, and on the top four, he's, like, going down already uh, and not really trying to break it up. So that blew me away, man. It was like, what's going on here? Is this just a McNeil thing? Is this a Mets thing? And then I was, I was, is this a round-the-league thing? Like, what is this? I Again, I sent videos to some players that I know and talk to, and they were like, what? That is crazy. What is going on? They're like, Reese looks normal. That's like what you're supposed to do. So then I had to dig deeper because I was watching the Mets game last night and Lindor on a double play ball ran through the bag 
And then the announcers kind of talked about the strategy to that. But to be honest, I forget and I couldn't figure out what they the strategy was. So I'm going to have to go find that footage right now because I couldn't prep it. Let's go see if I can find it. Okay, I found it. It was a double play to end the first inning. Lindor just runs through the bag, and they explain why here. Again, this is me hearing it for, like, the first time because I don't remember what they said. Play that ended the bottom of the first inning. I'll be biased with the glove flip. And you see that Lindor does not slide there. This is something that is relatively new in the game where players are being instructed to do this. Yes, and the idea is that if they don't get the out there, they have to go tag and they're running from third's going to score. And also another thing too. Another okay. If they don't get the out, if they don't get the out, if they don't get the out, they have to go tag him and the runner on third will score. So if the, if the, if they don't get the out at second, so if <clears throat> the fielder, what? If the fielder botches the, the like misses the bag with his foot? That's what they're preparing for? There's runners on first and second. Slow ground ball. So. Baez with the. They're saying, don't try to slide and make this. <clears throat> what? They. <clears throat> okay. Standard strategy would be like, hey, it, try to do a late slide and make this dude uncomfortable turning this double play within the rules and without injuring him. And if he throws the ball away, the runner that was started on second that's at third, rounding third right now will score on a bad throw, right? So force a bad throw or make him so uncomfortable he doesn't want to throw it away and he eats the play and doesn't turn to. The, they're saying their Mets are instructing them to casually jog through the base in case this dude's foot isn't on the bag. So then he would turn around and go tag Lindor, and while he's doing that, the runner on third will score? That's crazy weird. I think the Mets think you can't break up double plays. So I watched this last night. I was like, wait, what? What are you doing? What's happening? So then I went back into the deep dives, and I found all the other Mets players last year that kind of have speed and should be hustling and breaking up double plays and I, I searched for instances when they would be tasked to, like, make the dude uncomfortable to throw it. So uh, here's what I found. Side, Urias to second for one, on to first. Finds one toward the middle, oh. and a great diving stop by Abrams. The turn by Garst. The middle, right at Rojas. Juggles, takes it. They all do it. To the back. Second. Actually, the third, Sosa. What? Is that there's not a runner on second that could be rounding third in this one. So like that strategy doesn't even make sense, even though it doesn't make sense already. This is a tied game in the third inning. And instead of trying to make break up the double play, second. actually the third Sosa play ball right at Franco long with the turn and it should be two ball in the second for one over to first tied him up. There you go. Double play. Only down to third. Hayes goes cross body to second. To the left side. Chance for two. The turn by Ant. Rivera high hop to second. Could tell for one. All right here. Perdomo. Marte. Softly hit, but Vogelbach doesn't run well. And it's a double. double play ball right to Seeger. The turn by Simeon. Double play ball right at Arcia. The turn by Albi. Roll to third. Ground on a hop. Adamas, nice play. Throw to second. Pick it. Three, two. Marte not running well, and it's going to be a third chance for two. Vargas to second, and Garcia sharply one hop by Anderson. He gets the out of second, and on. Where was he? Where are they? What is going on? My only saving grace was, and Mets fans, if you're still watching, I'm so sorry. I was running this by Mets fans in the office being like, guys, what, what's going on? They said they never noticed this. Uh, Alonzo and uh, Canna last year, they acted normal. Grounded slowly to third. Durant with the sidearm toss. To 
That is the same as the Reese Hoskins slide, you know? Good job by Pete. He's at the cut of the grass. He's getting down late. He's throwing his arms up. He's trying to make them uncomfortable. Here's Alonzo again. Look at this. Nice. So some guys, I guess, aren't listening to whoever's telling them to not do this. Uh, here's Canna. And, yeah, he's he's playing hard. He, he doesn't not want them to turn this. Look at that slide. You know? And he, and he gets... The player here, Oswaldo, <clears throat> and that's legal. And that's fair. Oswaldo's got to move his feet. You got to come through the bag. You can't just stand on the bag. Uh, so, you know, Alonzo and Kana, great stuff. And then I thought, okay, <clears throat> before I make this video, I got to check around the league. I got to make sure this isn't widespread and just because, like, the Yankees don't do it, I've never noticed it. Or, you know, even Mets fans that I talked to, they didn't even notice it. So I checked around the league, and I'm going to – give you guys the link to check but yes not every team is doing this sure there's slow guys that they don't get down the line they're not going to there's kind of guys that might be injured or hurting and you know or the, or the game's lopsided but in most cases when it's a close game and you have a double play ball guys are trying to break up the double play they're trying to slide late make that fielder uncomfortable within the rules of the law and Break up the double play. So that at least saved my soul a little bit. But I don't know what's going on in Queens. It seems like they're instructed. I think maybe they have the rule wrong. So I I will post a link to this search that I did for you guys so you can go check it out. And what I did was, here's all the parameters. So I did 2023 season, okay? Um, balls hit to the shortstop and third baseman, all right? There's zero outs or one out, so you need two. Um, runners, not on second, not on third, runner on first, so you're going to turn two. Batted ball type, ground ball, and then just to, because you get like 200 uh, options to find better ones or, you know, to even like limit it a little more. I did uh, batting score difference, three runs, so it's a three-run game. And then I did the exit velo on the ball, 80 miles per hour to 95 miles per hour. Because if it's over 95, they're going to turn that so fast that the runner doesn't really have time to get down there. Um, but <clears throat> anywhere between 80 and 95, that's a double play ball where the runner has time with a lead to go make something happen and break it up. And then you can, um, all, the, all you got to do is change the team. So you can check out how your team does this. Uh, the only warning I'll give is Mariners. You guys were very similar to the Mets, but I think it's mostly uh, Eugenio Suarez from last year. But, like, man, go to the Angels, who last year were, um, you know, well, they were in it for a while, and then in the last two months they weren't. Uh, they, like, they had 17 instances because we really dwindled it down. And if you just watch a bunch of theirs, I'll pop them all out, and we'll just watch so you, so you guys can see, like, if you want to do this at home, this is how you do it. Just hold option or command open new tab and then you know just skip ahead to the ball and got down threw the hands up tried to break it up yep hands up at the cut trying to get down very normal here we go oh that was an error those will pop up you'll see those every now and then um okay here we go Right there, hands up, sliding late, trying to break it up. So, Angels fans, if you tuned in, you know, you got other problems you you care about, but this isn't one. So, this is what I did all last night. I just checked every team to figure out. I just didn't want to make a video about the Mets and, and have it be widespread around the league, you know. But if you do this same search and you find the Mets, it's, it's, it's it hurts my baseball soul, you know. Size lead. Look at this. What are we doing? What is going on? Okay, that one got botched. What are we doing? This is Nimmo. He's fast. So, yeah, you can go to the search on, I'll put the link in the YouTube. And what are we doing? And you can see if your team. Uh, what the organization does. Do they tell people to break up the double play or do they tell people to 
run away and not try to make anyone uncomfortable and just give up and say, oh, you guys want to turn two? Who am I to get in the way? Uh, very bizarre behavior. I don't really get it. And like I said, it, it kind of hurts my soul a little bit to watch because just because you can't slide past the bag, all you have to do is slide in the vicinity of the bag, maintain contact with the bag, and you're fine. Like Reese's slide was a legal slide. The reason it looks dirty, and I'll go back to the premiere uh, video of it, the reason it looks dirty <clears throat> is because McNeil bobbles this ball. Also, McNeil just stands on top of the bag because I think he thinks you can't do this, but you can. You're supposed to, like, run through it. A lot of times you see the second baseman run through the bag, catch it, and move their body forward with momentum. Now, this throw wasn't great, and then he drops the transfer. So instead of watching out for the runner, he's, like, you know, worried about the ball maybe, but he's just planted. Uh, normally, he throws that, and that back leg comes up, and that's what happens when Reese goes down. Instead... The back leg stays down because he didn't throw it. You know, think about a throwing motion. That leg would swing forward and he'd be on the other side of the bag. Reese doesn't know he's going to bobble the ball. He bobbles the ball. Uh, a lot of people said that Reese cleated him. And I was like, what do you mean? Like, he, his spikes weren't that up. They're like the same level as the foot. Spikes up, like, get him in the shin. And some of the videos I showed earlier, they did have spikes up. Uh, and then it is awkward that he lands on the other foot. But again, at the time Reese goes down, he doesn't know... Beatty's going to bobble this ball and stay planted with both legs. He thinks he's going to throw the ball and end up on over here, you know? Uh, so it ends up, it's bad, and it doesn't look good, but it's, it's mostly incidental, and it's a, still a legal slide. I just think the Mets have been told that those slides are illegal, and that's why we had this confusion. You think that's fucking okay, you're allowed to slide. What's wrong with that? All right, that was Jimmy's first thing. And to be honest, I'd like these videos to be around 20 minutes. And that was a deep dive into a first thing. So I'm going to speed up the next two things. Oakland's committing errors like absolutely crazy. And Blanco threw a no-hitter. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get into all of these that much. So let's just speed through it. I'm going to, maybe I'll dice it up. I'm going to search around. I'm going to find some interesting stuff. 